I'm Brigadier General Ulysses S. Grant, and you are here today with me walking the ground with General Grant. We're at the lower water batteries at Fort Donaldson in Dover, Tennessee. Here is where on February the 14th of 1862, Flag Officer Andrew Hull Foote came around yonder bend down there where you see the tree line coming across and sailed up here with the Mississippi River Squadron. He had four ironclads of the city class. His flagship was the St. Louis. He had the Louisville, the Pittsburgh, and the Carondelet. Behind those four ironclad boats, because they were timber clads, were two timber clads, the Conestoga and the Tyler. They sailed behind the protection of the ironclads. The ironclads came up to, you can see Hickman Creek yonder flowing out into the Cumberland River. That was the north end of my line as we encircled the fort. I was in great hopes that Flag Officer Foote could come here to Fort Donaldson and reduce these batteries like he did a few days earlier at Fort Henry. At Fort Henry, he sailed up to about a thousand feet from the fort and a 45 minute or so cannonading and Fort Henry surrendered. We were in hopes, both Flag Officer Foote and myself, that by reducing the water batteries that you see here in the Cumberland River flowing toward us, that we could take Fort Donaldson. At about 3 o'clock in the afternoon on February the 14th of 1862, that flotilla of six boats, four ironclads, two timberclads, came to within a thousand feet of these batteries or these guns in this battery a few hundred feet past where Hickman Creek is flowing into the river now these guns can fire with accuracy up to three miles they were a thousand feet away the muzzle velocity for these 32 pound guns that you see and this one big one a 64 pounder is hundreds of feet per second. They could fire with accuracy 16,000 feet. So Flag Officer Foote, as was I, I was down the river a bit sitting in a chair on the bank watching the battle that I was in hopes would be successful. They fought from three o'clock in the afternoon. Flag Officer Foote says in his report the next day to my superior officer, Major General Henry Halleck in St. Louis, that they fought for an hour and some 15 minutes. The soldiers are saying they exchanged iron valentines with a little bit of grim humor. But for about an hour and 15 minutes, they exchanged several hundred shots between the two of them. The Carondelet and the St. Louis Flag Officer Foote's command boat had their steering rudders and ropes shot away and were just drifting with the current. The other two boats, the Pittsburgh and the Louisville, went back downstream with them. The two timber clads, the Conestoga and the Tyler, fell back down river with them. Now you must understand as you look at this scene, that river is narrow, and it was a clear field of fire for these Confederate gunners. It is my understanding, the information I have at this time, shortly after the battle, that experienced gunners were brought in. I have not yet confirmed that. But the guns here that you see, and of the other battery, were sighted in. And they, as the Confederates we're hearing from the captured soldiers, these gunners here wore them out. But Flag Officer Foote says in his report that you should also know that just before they had to pull back 
with the Carondelet first having her rudder shot away and tiller ropes, my boat then, shortly after, had two lucky shots. The Carondelet steering was shot out, the St. Louis steering was shot out, and Ad, uh, Flag Officer Foot had to pull back. Flag Officer Foot says that they just had 15 more minutes they could have won the battle because the rebel gunners were running from the guns until they saw the St. Louis and the Carondelet drifting back downstream. The St. Louis, uh, the Pittsburgh and the Louisville fell back with them. The Conestoga, the Tyler fell back. And they let out, as they said, a mighty cheer and came running back to the guns and commenced firing again. So, he says in his report, alas, they were not to have that other 15 minutes, and they had to pull back. As I'm sitting down uh, the bank there, my heart sank, because I knew when the batteries here could not be reduced as they were earlier, a few days earlier at Fort Henry, that I was going to have to go into siege and I feared that it was going to be a long one. As it turned out, they tried to break out the next day on the 15th. They were repulsed and ultimately pushed back in their lines. And the morning of the 16th of February, Simon Bolivar Buckner surrendered what ultimately became a little more than 16,000 Confederate troops. And Donaldson was ours. My next move is to go to Clarksville, Tennessee, yonder way on the river, and then into Nashville, Tennessee. We'll have to see what happens. But you see the guns of this battery on the Cumberland River at Fort Donaldson in Tennessee, and you're looking at the river down here just a thousand feet in the distance where Flag Officer Foot and his four ironclad city class St. Louis, Carondelet, Louisville, and Pittsburgh, and the two timber clads, the Conestoga and the Tyler, came up to try to reduce the batteries and us to take Fort Donaldson without a siege or indeed without a battle. Flag Officer Foote says in his report that his boat, the St. Louis, took 39 hits between, as he put it, wind and water. And the other boats took, I think the Carondelet took some 35 hits. And the other boats, the Pittsburgh and the Louisville, 20 to 30 hits apiece. And they took a terrible beating. Flag Officer Foote had to pull back. He sent word to me late that night on the 14th, early morning on the 15th, before daylight, right at daylight, to come meet him because he could not come to me. He had been wounded in the fight. His pilot house had been shot away with a direct hit. It killed his pilot and wounded Flag Officer Foot in his arm and in his leg and ankle. And I went to meet him. He told me he was going to pull back to Cairo, Illinois. He had to because his two of his boats had no steering capability. The other two boats were seriously damaged. There were 54 sailors killed and wounded. I know not at this point how many of the Confederate gunners were injured or killed. I asked the flag officer to pull down. You can see in the distance to pull right around the bend in the river. Anchor and keep up steam. And the plumes of smoke with every boat having two tall stacks you could see multiple plumes of smoke. And I asked Flag Officer Foote, please to do that and let the Confederate troops here see all of those plumes of smoke. They would know that we weren't pulling out, that the Navy had not pulled out, because I said, if you do, it's going to be a great moral victory for the Confederates. Keep up steam, and we will go into siege. As it turned out, while I was at the conference on the St. Louis, anchored out in the river a little north of us, that the Confederates tried to break out. 
And as I said earlier, we drove them back in and they surrendered. They felt it to be a lost cause. And we took Fort Donaldson, a major victory for the federal forces. We were granted victory to our arms that day. But here, as brave as they were and as hard as they fought, the United States Navy took a, a terrible beating and I was afraid that I was going to have to go into siege. You see where the battle, the naval battle at Fort Donaldson took place. I'm Brigadier General Ulysses S. Grant, and you have been walking the ground with General Grant at the upper water batteries, lower water batteries at Fort Donaldson in Dover, Tennessee.